This is my ultimate Notion template for productivity. I designed this to simplify your workflow and make organizing tasks, notes, resources, and projects incredibly efficient. If you use this system, you can reduce your work hours and focus on what matters because a bad productivity setup will keep you busy but never really making progress. So in this video, I'll go through exactly how this template works and how to use it to change your productivity forever. I'm also launching Headquarters Transform, my private coaching program where I'll work one-on-one -on -one with you to completely redesign how you work forever. It's application only and spots are very limited. Now let's explore Headquarters. So this here is my template headquarters. And in this video, we'll go through exactly how this works and how to use it in your everyday life. Now let's start from the bottom real quick, just so we can understand the different sections. At the bottom here, we have my life buckets. These are the big overarching buckets in your life, such as fitness, business, relationship, family and friends, study, career, job. If you have any others, of course, you can just click here to add another one. And above that, we have our workspaces. These pages here let you see your data with a very specific goal in mind, such as time tracking or move the needle items. Above that, we have our projects, and these can be broken down into a few different views. Above that, we have our task list. Again, that can be broken down into a few different views. Above that, we have our calendar. Above that, we have our day as a list view. And then at the top, we have these quick buttons. I spent months designing this to make this as optimal as possible for your workflow. The big picture stuff is at the bottom and the things that you'll be interacting the most with are at the top. And as you can see, everything you need in your productivity can be found on this one page. We are no longer jumping between different apps. Everything we need is in this one dashboard. Now that we understand the overview of the template, let's start by having a look at tasks. So at the top here, we have these quick buttons and one of them being create a task. There's another one here called add a quick task and another one called create do now task. So let's click here on create a task. By the way, you can add tasks in a bunch of different places. You can add it here. You can add it directly to your calendar. You can add it down here. You can add it on specific project pages. There's a bunch of different places you can add it. But let's start here by just clicking on this button here to create a task. Let's say we have to research for a paper that we're writing. So this here is our task. And here we have a bunch of different items to make prioritizing our task list even simpler. So the first item here is a checkbox just to say if we've completed it or not. Then here we have the date. Now, if you add a date to this task, it will automatically be added to your calendar. So if you've got a plan for when you want to do this specifically, you can add a date to it. So let's just say I'm going to do this today. Then here we have the urgency. So this could either be urgent, not urgent, or a habit. So let's just say that this here is urgent, for example. Then here we have important. So we could say it's important, not important, or move the needle. I'll get to move the needle later on in this video. So let's just say that this here is important, for example. The next item here is state of mind. So flow tasks typically take about two hours to complete. If it's quick, it takes under five minutes. And if it's easy, it doesn't involve too much cognitive demand. So let's say research for reports here. This will take me about two hours and I really need to concentrate. The next thing here we have is bucket and project. So research for report, this here is for my job. So I'll click in job here. Then we have the project and we don't have a project for this yet. So let's just create a new one called report. So I'll add that here. So now by typing this in, I've created this project page here and we'll dive deeper into that later on. Then here we have the minutes and time. The minutes here is for you to do time tracking, which again, I'll talk about later on. And then the time here is for you to do time blocking. Hours here automatically gets converted from minutes. So if you're on the laptop, you can easily add tasks here. You can easily add notes, which I'll show you later, and you can easily add resources, and they'll show up in the places that you need them to. And if you're on your mobile, I've actually created a mobile-friendly page so you can add this widget to your phone. That way you can easily add tasks, add notes, add resources, and you can also see your tasks for the day and see all your uncompleted projects as well. Now we'll go through the day-to-day, -day, we'll go through the calendar, we'll go through your task list, we'll go through your projects more in detail. But before we do that, I want to show you how we can quickly add a note and quickly add a resource. So if we click here on take a quick note, here we can add a note into our system. So let's just call this note one. So when I add a note, I can say which life bucket is this relating to? So let's just say it's to do with a job. And let's say the project here is to do with a report. And I can even add a topic of interest. So let's just call it researching skills, for example. That's the topic of interest here. And then here I can write my note, blah, blah, blah. So let's scroll down and go to our project here. If I click here on the report page and scroll down, you can see note one sitting here. And if we scroll down and go to the job page, so on this page here, I can see my day to day. I can see my uncompleted work tasks, my projects relevant to the job. And down here, I can see my notes. So in a matter of seconds up here, 
I can add a note and it will show up on the relevant pages. Next to that, we have adding a resource. So if I click here on add a resource, let's say I found a new book that I want to read. Let's call it book one, very creative. What I can do here is then select the type. So this here is a book. I can say the topic of interest. Let's just say it's to do with researching skills, for example. I can say when I finish the book, I can say the status of the book. So let's say this is a book that I want to buy. I can add a URL to it and I can review it, but I'm not going to do that as I haven't read the book yet. And now I can click away. In a second, I could add a resource and it will be stored in my system. Well, what you can do now is scroll down and here in our workspaces, you can find resources. Here we can see a database called My Learning. And down here in Want, we can see Book One. And your resources are split up into these different categories here. Courses and webinars, podcasts and videos, coaching, articles, newsletters and posts, files and topics. So Book One here, you can write notes about the book. Once you've finished it, you can change it to finish and leave it a review. This is obviously just a review for yourself. So I have this one hub now with all of my different resources. By the way, with the Notion Chrome extension, you can add resources to your page in literally one click. Now we know how to quickly add a task, note and resource. Now let's have a look at how to manage our task list. So this here is our task list and we have a few different views here. Now these here are pretty self-explanatory. In the quick one, you'll just see quick tasks, flow one, you'll just see flow tasks, etc. But most of the time you'll be working under the order tab most likely. So let's click here to add a new page and I'll show you how this order tab here works. Let's just call this task two, task three and task four. What this tab here does is literally reorganize your task so you know which tasks to do first. So let's say task two here is not important and not urgent, for example. Then let's say task three here is important, but it's not urgent. As you can see, it actually jumps up in the queue now. So task three is sitting above task two. That's because task three here is important and this one here is not important. Then let's say for task four here that this is not important, but it is urgent. As you can see, once again, it jumps up in the queue. So now we have task four sitting above task three. That way I know to work from the top of the list down to the bottom. I found this incredibly useful in planning my day. Now for each of these tasks here, you can say the relevant state, bucket and project as well. So I'll just quickly fill that out. Now the last thing here in our task management is filling out the state of mind. And you'll see why this is important for the next section, which is planning out our week. So research for report here is a flow state task. Let's say this is also a flow, this is also a flow, and then task two here is an easy task. Now what we've done is organized our task list. The next thing now to do is to organize our week. So right now you can see research for report is sitting in here. That's because this task here has today's date. So what I'll do is add these tasks here to today's date as well. So I can either click here and then just select today's date. As you can see, it shows up here. Or what I can do is simply drag and drop it in like that. And it doesn't get removed from here. As you can see, all the tasks are still here. By dragging it, it just tells it what date it should have. So now I have my tasks here in my week. And most likely, you'll have a few other tasks within your week. Now, I have this productivity rule that changed my life. The rule is I can only have two flow tasks per day. That's because a flow task takes about two hours. And the brain can only use full cognitive effort for four hours per day. So if you're planning to have more than two flow tasks in a day, you're going to burn yourself out over time. And this is why task prioritization is so important for productivity. So what I'll do here is say, which of these three flow tasks here will I have to move to the next day? Well, task three here is important, but not urgent. So I will move task three to the next available slot, which is tomorrow. As you can see, I have a very open calendar. So what we're doing here is planning our week to be sustainable. Now that we've planned our week, let's have a look at our day planner. So these tasks here, are automatically showing up here under my day to day. Now, personally, what I like to do is to do the flow tasks first thing in the day. So this here is important and urgent, and I'll move this here up to the top. But if your preferred way of working is to do an easy or quick task first, then obviously just drag that task up to the top. So here I'll say research for report. Let's do this here at 8 a.m. Then this flow task here will probably take about two hours. So then let's say this here is at 10 a.m. And then we'll give ourselves some time and say task two here is at 1 p.m. So what I've done here is plan out my day. And as you can see, we might have a bit of space left over. And if that's the case, we can simply add more tasks from the bottom of this list. 
So let's say we have task five here. That's an easy task. What I can do is simply add that task to today as well. And let's say that this here is at 2 p.m. Planning out your day and week is a game changer for your productivity. So now we understand how tasks work, our week works, how our day works, and how we can quickly add tasks, notes, and resources. Now let's have a look at our projects. So if we scroll down here, we can see my projects. And here under no status, we have this presentation and report. And personally, I try to only have five projects on at any given moment. Any more than that, it will be difficult to manage and actually make progress. So what we'll do is lift from no status into one of these categories here. So if it has a deadline, we'll add it here. If it doesn't, but it's one that you want to work on, we'll add it to favorite. Or if it's an ongoing project, like managing an Instagram account, for example, then we'll add it to ongoing. So this report here, for example, we'll say the deadline here is on the 10th. The life bucket here is to do with the job and the status here will be deadline. So as you can see, that now appears here under deadline. So let's click here on the report page and open this up. When we're working on the report, what we can do is open up this page. That way we won't get distracted with anything else. So on this report page, I can see all of the relevant tasks to do with the report, all of the relevant notes to do with the report, and all of the relevant bottlenecks. So that's how projects work and your life buckets work in a similar way. So these pages here all work pretty similar, but job is slightly different. So let's first just look at the job page. If we open this up, on this page here, you can actually see a mini version of headquarters specifically when you're at your job. So you can see your day to day here with just the stuff relevant to your job. So if you have, let's say tennis in the evening, but it's not labeled as job, it's actually labeled as fitness. As you can see, it no longer shows up here. On this page, we are just seeing stuff to do with the job. So we have my day to day, we have uncompleted work tasks, we have projects just to do with your job, and we have notes just to do with your job. These other pages here work similar, just without the time blocking feature. So if you open up the relationship page, for example, you can see all of the tasks related to your relationship, all of the notes, all of the projects. Same thing for family and friends, same thing for study, etc. I'll get to journaling later on in this video. So that's how life buckets and that's how projects work in headquarters. Now on this project page here, you might have realized there was this thing called bottlenecks. So let's go through how bottlenecks work. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the idea of a bottleneck, it's basically a thing that is stopping you from making progress. So so let's say you have a bottleneck here to do with your report. Let's say you're struggling to find relevant studies, for example. What we'll do here is click on template. And on this page here, what we can do is click here on filter and we can change this rule here where the project is only to do with this report. So now we'll see tasks here that are to do with the report. And what I can do here is just start by journaling and writing about this. So when writing about the problem, I might realize I should sign up for some scholar database or something. So what we're doing here is creating tasks that address and hopefully fix our problem. And we'll be even more productive with this by saying the date that we'll do this. So I'll say I'll do this today. And signing up for something like this will take like 20 minutes. So we're not just writing about our problems, we're coming up with ways to fix them and then directly planning when we're going to do it. So now if I go back to headquarters, here I can see my day and I can also see the task here that we added of tennis and I can see sign up for research database. So let's drag this here and do that at 3 p.m. And tennis here, let's say we're doing that at 6 p.m. That is a personal task to do with fitness. We don't need a relevant project for it. And both of these here are to do with my job. Speaking of writing about our problems, the old way of journaling is broken. So I invented dynamic journaling and I'll show you how this works. So what I'll do is just tick in all of these tasks here and I'll scroll down here, click on plus and say weekly review. And let's open this up. Here we can do typical journaling prompts such as looking at my task list completed this week. Do I feel like I accomplished enough? What were my biggest distractions this week? But this here is where the magic happens. So automatically all the tasks that I've completed this week will show up in this list here. And what I can do is go through these and say which of these had a big impact. So let's just say hypothetically that signing up for this research study database had a really big impact on my life. What I'll do here is click and change to move the needle. As you can see, it gets removed from here and we can find it under needles this week. And what will happen is if you do this consistently, after a few weeks, what you'll have on the move the needle page down here is a list of all of the things that you've done that had a profound impact. So here I can see sign up for research study database. And on this page here, I can start finding patterns and you'll end up here with a list of things that had a big impact so you know what to do more of in the future. And on this page here, you'll also see the projects that move the needle. So let's just say that this report here, for example, move the needle. Then with this collection, you'll know to do more similar projects in the future. So that is how the move the needle feature works in headquarters. And if we go back to this weekly review here, you can also see habits showing up this week. So these will show up here automatically. 
So let's just say you have a habit here today. Let's call it run and you actually went for that run. And basically on this weekly review here, automatically you can see run shows up. So that will help you in answering this question here. Looking at my habits this week, do I feel like I did enough? I call this dynamic journaling because what we're doing is using real data here to journal about. So that's how the weekly review function works. And that is how the move the needle function works. Now that we understand that, let's have a look at the rest of these workspaces in here. So we have quick notes, which is every single note that you've ever taken will show up in here. We have our resources, which we looked at before. Then we have personal here. Every single personal task and event that you have will show up on this page here. This is really useful to track if you struggle with making time for personal stuff. I have a timetable page, which is really useful if you're a student. You can simply click here on the schedule. So let's say Monday at 9 a.m. you have marketing class. You can literally just type in marketing. So now on this timetable here, you can see marketing at nine. But also if you click now on marketing, you can open up this page here with all of the relevant tasks, notes, and bottlenecks to do with your marketing class. Super useful. And we have the ideal schedule, which is an exercise you've probably heard of before. I find it really useful. Basically here, you can plan out your ideal week and what that would look like. We have the move the needle page, which we went through before. I'll talk about the time tracking in the next section. We have the habit tracker, which will show you all your habits on this page. Your habit, like going for a run, is simply a task. So let's not have a separate app for it. But with headquarters, we can still view those habits as a separate page here. So we get the benefits of having our own dashboard for it, whilst not giving ourselves extra work by having a separate app. And we have the open loops page, which is really useful if you're like me and you might struggle sleeping because your brain kind of is wondering, what are all my projects that I haven't finished yet? What are all the tasks that I haven't finished yet? Then we have all of our bottlenecks, which we've gone through. We have our mobile HQ, which we've gone through. And we have our topics, such as researching skills, which we added before. So that here is our workspaces. Let's go through the time tracking. See, as we're working throughout our day up here, what we can do is fill out the minutes here. So let's just say this one here took 120 minutes. This here took 120 minutes. This took 60. This took 45. This took 15. And I played tennis for 60 minutes. So as we're working, we can fill out the minutes here. If you use Notion Calendar, you can actually add a code that will automatically track all of this in the background. But if you don't want to use Notion Calendar, you can just do it directly in here by filling out the minutes. So now if we scroll down and go to the time tracking page and open this up, this page here breaks down my time into buckets. So I have fitness and job here. So I can see in total, I've spent one hour playing tennis. And in total, I've spent six hours at my job. I can see time on projects. So I've spent two hours here on this presentation and I've spent three hours here on this report. And then I can also see it broken down by the month. And this page here allows me to see exactly where my time is going. Again, if you want a productivity expert to help you review your projects and goals, then you can apply for Headquarters Transform below. All right, let's go through the last feature here in Headquarters, which is the Routine button. So what I'll do is drag this here onto a separate line. And here what I can do is click on this gear icon. So here I can see habit one, two, and three. And what I'll do is just delete these as their examples. Now you might have a routine that you do every single morning. And I'll say that running here is a habit. I'll say that it's to do with fitness and we don't need a project to do with running. And then check emails here is to do with my job. What I can do now is drag these here into this section here. And then I'll click here on done. And I'll simply drag it back here to the top. So now in the morning, I'll just click on the tomorrow tab as an example. What I can do here is click on the routine button. And as you can see, it generates check emails and run. And what I can do now is select these and simply drag it into my morning. And as you can see, it keeps these properties here. So when you download headquarters, you get a task management system, a project management system, a life bucket system, a place for your notes, your resources, your time tracking, your journaling, and so much more you no longer need to jump between five and 10 different apps. You have the one dashboard to organize your life and work. There's a link in the description and you can start using it in a few clicks. And if you're ready to go ahead, then click on this video here, which is the full user setup guide. Here I'll show you how to get started with headquarters once it's downloaded.